Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Jeremy DeWitt Show right here on YouTube on Police Tube's Uncle's channel. It's the middle of September now, September 10th, and things are coming to an end for Jeremy DeWitt and his freedoms. As you know, he's going to be locked up pretty soon. But I wanted to take a look into his bank accounts. Because I know a lot of people in the community think, you know, Jeremy doesn't have any money. Jeremy didn't have any money. Jeremy was always living off of his credit cards. But what I want to do here is <clears throat> just go over some of the facts of the matter. And I'll remind you back in 2018, 2019, Jeremy is now being in, uh, tried for tax fraud and all sorts of other frauds. All the trials and cases that you're seeing against Jeremy DeWitt right now in 2024, they're all part of an or the original RICO investigation, the racketeering and corrupt influence organization uh, investigation that was shut down by the Orange County Sheriff's Office back in 2019. Jeremy DeWitt was pulling in a lot of money. Here's one statement here's on the, uh, that you see on the screen. He had deposits into his account of $33,000 this month, and then he had withdrawals of $35,000. I don't know if you know or not, but that's a lot of money. That's U.S. dollars. We're talking cash. And I'm not going to show you the details of all these. They're not all check fraud. Some of them are. But he was doing a lot of insurance scams. He was working with an attorney that would help him send out notices to people that he was scamming to their insurance companies and get their insurance companies to pay for fake damages or accidents that Jeremy DeWitt caused. Jeremy DeWitt was running a corrupt organization that was thriving off of fraud and deception and illegal activities. And it's important to note that once Jeremy got himself caught up in a RICO investigation, which is a very serious investigation that looks in that can look into every aspect of your life, including everyone you're connected with and everyone they're connected with. So if that RICO investigation was able to continue on like most of them do, they would have looked into Jeremy DeWitt's business partners, people who he was starting like ambulance chasing businesses with, where Jeremy DeWitt was literally chasing people around in an ambulance. And they would have found that he had some business partners that were doing illegal dealings with him to help enable him. And those business partners also had ties with Orange County Sheriff politicians. And he got some strings pulled and got things swept under the rug for a little while, some people like Sergeant Vidler and Corporal John Ramsey and other people blew the whistle on the corruption that was going on in the Orange County Sheriff's Department and in Central Florida in general. But that's a story for another day. Jeremy DeWitt was pulling in a lot of illegal money. Let's go over some of the other bank accounts because that's what this video is about here. Here's another one. Okay, this is one of his smallest months here. This is when he went on vacation for a month, so no deposits there. Here's another one. Deposits of $25,000 this month. A lot of this, he put the money in and then he withdrew it in cash. There's a lot of $10,000 withdrawals in cash. And where do you think all that money was going? He was spending it all? He's got little amounts hidden away. Let's look at some more here. Here's another month where he had $25,000. Is that the same? That's the same month. Here's another one where he had $32,000 in deposits. And this is month after month, ongoing. Here's another one where he had $43,000 in deposits. And this is just one of Jeremy's banks out of many, by the way. Here's another one where he had $33,000 in deposits. Notice that he's always withdrawing almost more than he's depositing in a lot of these cases. This one, he deposited $33,000 and withdrew $35,000. This one, he deposited $43,000 and he withdrew $42,000. This one he deposited $32,000 and withdrew $45,000. He always keeps his ending balance very low at the end of the month because he knows that if he's ever sued or anything, he doesn't want his bank accounts to be garnished. He doesn't want to have to empty them at the last minute. So he withdrawal and saved a lot of his money. And keep in mind, uh, for these periods at which he's being indicted for federal tax fraud, he was declaring that he was only making like $16,000 per year. But that's less. The total income that he declared to the IRS for the entire year was less than one month's bank deposits for this guy. And I always think it's very interesting because a lot of people are like, you know, he's got 30 credit cards and he's a loser. 
and he spends all of his money on colognes and badges and shirts and stuff and Oakleys. So he doesn't have any cash, which, you know, I disagree with because, you know, he's had a lot of money coming in just in one the one account that we're looking at here. He had a lot of money coming in and uh, making a lot of withdrawals. So he was able to pay his bills and save some money and afford those colognes. A lot of people think that he's upside down on his house, like his house is going to get foreclosed on at any point now. But, you know, that's not the case either. His house is worth something like 400000 or more dollars. Him and Rania paid something like $200,000, something very low for it. So they've accrued a lot of equity in their home as it's gone up in value. He's taken some second mortgages out on it, but those were for very small amounts. If I recall, it was like $10,000, $20,000 just to pay some fees, like lawyer fees and stuff, I believe. But he's not upside down on his home. They're not going to foreclose on his home anytime soon because he's got a lot of equity in it. He's even told his wife, Rania, on a jail call that if he goes to jail for a long time, she needs to just sell the house, take all the money from it, which is going to be like over $100,000 that she's going to get back from it all, and just move to Egypt, he says. Which, uh, you know, she doesn't want to move back to Egypt. That's a ridiculous thought um, of Jeremy's. Jeremy's the one that would like to move to Egypt and get away from this all, you know. Best thing that Rania could do is sell the house and go uh, get a room with someone that can enable uh, Rania to, you know, go work and support her baby. Her baby. The baby, Jeremy. But, you know, she's not going to move back to Egypt or anything like that. That would be ridiculous. And absolutely out of the question for her. But... She should sell the house. There's a lot of equity in it. She could walk away with a lot of cash. Jeremy's not going anywhere. He's staying right where he's at in jail for quite a while. And it's all very interesting because, you know, this RICO investigation was five years ago when it got shut down. And we're just now starting to see some of the uh, criminal cases, the fruit of the RICO case you know, come to life in front of us. The RICO case got shut down, but the investigations through multiple agencies, some of them continued on. And uh, uh, with some of the other aspects of the investigation, unfortunately, they couldn't dive into Jeremy's life and his business associates and uncover political quid pro quos like they wanted to because that was shut down by the politician. But we'll be giving you an update about that soon enough. This video, I just want to talk about Jeremy DeWitt's deposits, which were very excessive, considering that he declared to the IRS that he was only making sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars per year. Stay tuned. We're going to be watching his federal trials and the other cases all uh, come to light here pretty soon. He's got a federal trial coming up. I believe it's January first, which doesn't make sense because that's New Year's Day. So right after uh, January first, I believe it was September first, but they got a ninety-day delay. And then his Osceola County cases are coming up, I believe, on September 24th. But those will probably be delayed as well. Continued again because it's Jeremy in a mirror. But stay tuned because we will continue our investigation and our reporting of everything that's going on. So make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you comment down below. Let me know what you think of all these deposits. $43,000 in deposits in one month. Where do you think that money's coming from? I see all the records here. I know where it's coming from and exactly where it's going, but unfortunately, I can't share his banking records with you here. Maybe on my Patreon, link down in the description. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have yourself a great day.